So uh, I, I probably could have easily not put this round up, but seeing as this is an honest channel and an honest documentation of this process of trying to improve and trying to get better, you know what, let's, let's do it. So this is going to be two parts, front nine and back nine. Um, Jamiga put on another great event, really enjoyed playing on the Jamiga Tour, uh, obviously this is the first one. Unfortunately the first day there was a rain delay, um, so they had to cancel the first day in the end, so it was an 18 hole shoot here, um, in which there was just over 100 players playing on this golf course, which was such a nice golf course, really really nice layout. One thing I will say is the greens are actually 12 and a half on the stint meter. And these are some of the slopiest greens I've ever played on. So the combination of those two things make this, um, I was definitely out of my depths in terms of personal experiences playing in these sorts of conditions. One thing I will say from today, I think through the first seven holes, um, I probably missed about two shots and I was something like three or four of a par and it's all down to short game, which is what you're gonna see. So. The first hole was around 400 yards, um, just had a flick in here from like 65, 70 yards and I had this putt down the hill, it's quite a bit of slope, the thing that you're not really going to appreciate are the slopes, which is standard on, you know, on camera, it doesn't really capture it, but that's the type of part where I was just literally stood over it, making sure I didn't knock it off of the green. Um, and that is just definitely not how you should be approaching this. I actually had Leon on the bag today. So Leon injured his hand wash <laughs> washing the dishes in the morning. Um, he actually injured his hand. So I think he's like sprained it, but he thinks he's okay now. So hopefully he's going to be all right for the next um, for the next couple of events. But it's good to have Leon. Good to have Leon on the bag. He's a very like calming personality to be around, um, and he kept me calm even though things weren't exactly go into plan. I actually had quite a solid start here. I gave myself two good looks for birdie on the first two holes, which is all you can ask for really. But um, my putting and, and short game in general is just so far from where it should be and you only really see how far away it is when you start playing in conditions like this. So playing around your local course where the greens would be like six, seven, eight max on the stimp, you don't really notice how precise you've got to be when you start playing with um, slopey greens that are quick. You've got to be on it because there's there's no let up at all. So um, I had 120 yards here after hitting a two iron off the tee. Hit a really nice shot at the flag. It's just come up a slight bit short. We're actually, Leon was like, aim at the flag. Let we Our miss is right of the flag. So I left myself before the hole, and this part, even though it's 15 foot, you're about to see the, the speed of these greens. So I'm aiming about four foot left here, maybe even five foot left, um, and just giving it nothing, and it feeds away um, very, very fast down past the hole. Um, then got a fairly easy tap in. So this is no dramas here. And uh, yeah, on the next hole, you're about to see the game sort of um, sort of where it's at short game wise. So this was, I'd say, one of the best shots I hit of the day. Like golf swing wise, it was great. So Leon just told me to aim at the bridge um, and I pretty much just knocked it on the bridge. Just left a bit before I'm here and left myself 130 yards. It was a fairly breezy day. It was blowing, gusting at about 25 miles an hour, I'd say. Uh, this is uphill, but downwind. 130 so 135 is a 48 degree like standard shot for me so this is just taking a tiny bit off of 48 um, didn't fully commit to this the flags actually cut on the right and you're about to see the green which is a bit funky in this pin position to be honest it was a bit funky um, but I just left it out to the right so I think Leon even said to me through like seven to nine holes if it was him chipping and putting he would have probably been like level par max um, I think I was, what was I, through nine holes? Five over par through nine holes. So you're gonna see it unfold. Anyway, so this part is, um, so I'm above the hole here. It's pretty much impossible not to leave yourself above the hole where this is at. So we're just trying to pick a spot that was on the, the front of the green, or the, the start of the green, uh, where the ball's gonna roll, and then release down to the hole. I just slightly misread the, uh, misread the fringe here, which was very, um, yeah. 
so yeah, just slightly mis misread the fringe, um, and it's just basically gone to the green with a bit bit too much pace, which you're going to see. And that's really all it took. All it took, really all it took. And then you're looking at like eight foot up the hill for birdie. Now because my pace was slightly off. So when your pace is slightly off, I feel, and this is this is what Leon said as well, when your pace starts to go off, not only are you gonna miss them down here, you're gonna miss them uphill, because you start thinking that the greens are just ridiculously quick. Um, and when you're uphill, you don't have the confidence to actually give the ball a good run, because that's in the back of your head. So an unnecessary bogey there. So that's the first unnecessary drop shot. In fact, let's do a tally of unnecessary drop shots. We're about to see another one here. So this is 145 yards, downwind off the right. So just aiming at the flag, letting the wind bring it. But that was a, not the best of golf swings. So just pulled that left with a 48 degree. Left myself apart across the green. This is actually this actually starts sloping from the left, and then it goes downhill for the last 15 foot really quick, which is no excuse for what happens in a minute. So um, when I actually struck this part, I I didn't expect to look up and see it motoring off the green. But um, yeah, just have a look at this. This is unnecessary drop shot number two. I mean, yes, this is not the easiest two part in the world, but you don't really want to be leaving yourself apart outside of six foot from this distance. And if you have a good like feel for speed playing on these types of greens and how the effect the slopes the speed, this is something that you're really not gonna be having, having a problem with. But at the same time, like, this is the first tournament on the Jamaica Tour. I mean, I'm guessing that the greens probably won't quite be this quick for the rest of the season. Possibly they will a couple times, but um, it's definitely a good experience. Um, and I definitely know like the areas that, I, that need a lot of work. So yeah, unnecessary drop shot number two. So two over through four holes. And I mean, I've missed the previous second shot by like five yards to the right and that wasn't the best but that was the side to miss it every day so we get to the fifth hole now um so this is a par four dog legs round to the right and actually hit a really nice shape here so this is left to right um off of the big tree which you're going to see in a second now made a really good golf swing the ball actually i don't want to sound like i'm just making it too the ball actually kicked left from the fairway which was um, not predicted really, we expected it to be round to the right. Um, and it ended up behind this tree. So I left myself, I think this was about 175 yards. So just tried to chip one down over five iron, get it releasing, didn't quite release enough. So I left myself 50, I think I had like 55 yards to this flag. So what we're, what we're looking at here, this false, almost like a false front, this, this massive tier um, is literally huge. The flag was cut 10 paces over the top of that ridge. So we're trying to find a number for pitching this, like a yard or two over the mound, over the over the ridge. And I actually hit like a really good shot here. I was just out by like two yards. So instead of it just skipping back to the flag, it's just caught the top of the hill and stopped dead. But one thing me and Leon both thought about from today was that Neither of us have a high lofted wedge that we actually use. I think he goes 58. But um, what he's noticed is um, recently people like Kepka, uh, Dustin Johnson, they're all carrying um, sort of like a high lofted wedge. So like a 62 or a 64 that they actually use from the fairway so they can make. So I'm hitting a 56 in there, which is like a half swing, which comes out really, really low. Um, and obviously it is nippy and it will stop, but it's coming in so low that it takes a few bounces before it stops. But I'm actually speaking to Callaway and getting a 62 degree in the drawers to have a like a 50 to 60 yard three quarter swing. It's gonna go in nice and floaty and just stop dead. It's just gonna be a lot easier. And the fact that me, me and Leon both leave ourselves that yardage quite a bit um, when we're hitting driver, um, it just makes sense and it's gonna be a, a scoring weapon. So. This hole is like a huge, um, a huge open area. You can hit it in. The miss was left. I took advantage of that, as you can see. Uh, left myself 165 yards into the wind. Hit a nine iron straight at the flag. Um, there's a big mound, a big ridge on this green again. It slopes down towards the flag. Just ended up landing on the top of that and then ripping back to here. 
Um, an extra couple yards, and that's probably really tight. Um, a cameraman didn't get this putt, but um, again, just did not judge the pace at all. Left myself, um, left myself this putt going back, so 10 foot. So I've already had three sort of unnecessary bogeys. I guess, you know, what happened on the whole previous, like stuff like that happens. Ended up making a good putt here for par. Right, moving on to the sixth, seventh hole. Um, so this is a 360-ish yard, I think, par four, which dog legs around to the right up the top. So let's try to hit this pretty much where the fairway goes and just let the wind drift it. The wind's drifted it a tiny bit. Um, and I've ended up sort of like in the bottom of this mound, which you're gonna see here um, with a tree in the way. So the only shot I had here was just to sort of like bump it forward and try and get it landing just short of where there's a lip that goes up near the bunker and try and get it jumping on. Um, there wasn't really a chance of getting this close, especially with the light, it was properly sat down. So ended up hitting a very average shot, just short of the green. Result. And then yeah, left myself this um this little chip, which I was actually pretty proud of. Not proud of, like happy with. So this is um so the short game, right, this is gonna be my main focus now going forward. I feel like my long game is almost in a place where I can I could probably compete. Um this is a tight golf course which shows off like any errant tee shots. Um, but it, the long game is definitely moving in the right direction where, like I said, where, I'm, where I am struggling is, is around the greens. So this was, this was good, <laughs> as good as it got around the greens. That was a decent little chip there, but left myself um, this putt, which was about four foot, but this literally felt like I had to aim like 90 degrees to the left. So you just, this is, um, it was an interesting flag to be fair. This is quite a high percentage slope, I would say. But you see from the pace that I hit this, it's just literally getting it rolling. And just took the high side and then keeps rolling. So yeah, sort of that, I mean, another day, good short game. That's that's up and down, that shouldn't really be a problem. You shouldn't be making five from 60 yards, which is frustrating. But yeah, getting back to the short game. So um, I'm just gonna just have that as my, like almost like an obsession, like just short game focused. Um, the stuff that I've been doing with Leon's brother Ryan has really helped recently technique wise it's starting to get there um, but I'm so early on in the process that my technique stuff is still starting to feel good now it's just a case of once the strike is super consistent then you move on to actually trying to um, have some being able to see shots around the green, I think that that's where it's at. So when you're just off the green, you've got to see like different trajectories, know what swing, what technique is going to produce those trajectories. Because when it comes to conditions like this, where the greens are, the greens are quick and they're slopey, like I said earlier, you've got to be that precise that you've got to know the trajectory that the ball's entering the green, how much spin it's going to have, and then how much speed it's going to be carrying once it does its you know checking up. And you're going to get that from spending a lot of time um, I've actually been looking at guys like Brett Rumford, um, Leon raves about him, I've seen him on Instagram, if, if you guys want to look at some short game stuff, have a look at Brett Rumford on YouTube, there's some unbelievable videos where um, he's just hitting shots and he's also talking about his technique which is really interesting as well, um, sort of the direction I'm trying to go with my technique that Ryan's teaching me, but like fairly similar methodology. Um, but yeah, this was um, so not not the best of tee shots left out to the right. In fact, it was it was awful. Like sort of not committed to hitting a low draw in there, which is what you needed to do. Just like stuck it out there. Um, very scared putt. So I moved on to this par five. At this point, I was thinking, do you know what? You could be like level or one over at this point. You're four over, but there's two par fives in a row now. So let's um, or whatever I was five over. So let's get one back. Did not hit the best tee shot. Maybe a, a touch of frustration in that one. Um, okay that? Didn't show the reaction there. <laughs> so I left myself quite a long way. So we did, I was behind a tree, but Leon just told me to hood a five iron and try and get it as close to the green as possible, which ended up not being a bad result.
cameraman's going to look right. And by the way, I haven't mentioned the cameraman yet. Um, so a local lad actually films, and I really appreciate him, appreciate him coming up. He was he was a member, um, and I'm giving him I'm giving him an online lesson for free and sorting him out for helping me out. But he's done like a great job of filming this. Um, he's done a great job of the back nine too. So left myself uh, 90 yards here into a bit of wind, a little 56. Uh, left it under the hole, probably for the first time of the day, and actually gave myself a birdie putt, even though it was on the fringe. Leon um, gave me a good read here. Um, but again, just a bit scared and a bit, um, yeah, I won't use the word because you're probably not allowed to use those kind of terms on YouTube. But um, yeah, all in all, this is the front nine. So like I said, I probably could have just got away of not putting this up because of the score, but I'm just gonna put it all up, gonna be honest. Probably gonna get rinsed, but um, I know it's moving in the right direction. I know what needs work, and I just need to keep playing tournaments and gain experience, and yeah, the score's a, mi a million miles away from where, where it needs to be, but you know, this is, um, this is the process. This is the honest process. Hope to uh, catch you for the back nine.